Good afternoon, Dr. Rajan. Uh, thank you for agreeing to talk to Junior Doctors Forum. I understand you're a surgeon who went on to do a short service commission in the Indian Army. Could you please tell us your experience as a commissioned officer? Well, it all depends on how the story goes like this. The story goes like this. Uh, I've been wanting to join Army for a long time, right from the days in school. So when my friends used to talk about NDA and IMA, and uh, what I found is that uh, I also developed interest in medicine. So I had the choice of joining the, the other colleges in my city, Chennai, and I also had the option of joining Army, uh, the Armed Forces Medical College in uh, Pune. Uh, but once I got selected, I was able to make a decision. I was like almost like my family and others told that uh, once you got a seat and through All India, why didn't you take a look at it? So I was a bit confused. So one thing was clear was that either I'll go through All India or to Armed Forces. And then I forgot about this for a long time until I finished my house urgency. And at the time, some of my seniors said, again, I found that they had joined the Army and they said it's good. So, but that was the time also I was thinking of doing my plastic, I mean, my post-graduation general surgery. It took a year after my internship. Then I joined uh, Madras Medical College uh, for my MS General Surgery. For a short while I was thinking of going abroad, but then better sense prevailed and I came back. That's the time I got married. Then my wife is also a doctor. Her name is Gomti. And within a few months of marriage we found that she's pregnant. And I've cleared my uh, degree exams. So there's, it's like a catch-22. She was going to have a, we are going to have a baby and uh, I just sort of my internship in or my residency in general surgery and I had to choose what to do and while this was going on I, say, I saw an ad in, in the uh, newspapers that they are calling for doctors to join and that was the time and just when Cargill war had uh, been just over and uh, it was a victory for us but I also came to know a lot of casualties. So when I saw the pay and perks, it was the, I think the fifth pay commission had come and it looked a bit more, uh, like I would say, it was almost like four times the money I got in uh, as an register as a resident in general surgery. And I asked my wife, both of us actually didn't know what life was in army. Uh, so we applied, we got a call letter, we both of us went for the interview. She was, I think at the time, seven months pregnant in Delhi. And the interview went on, I mean, it was over in five minutes. And they said you can go for your medical examinations. When we gave our medical examinations, uh, yeah, well, it was an experience. They almost stripped me uh, for that. A quite uh, awkward situation. But they told my wife that she's pregnant and she can't give the, uh, the medical exam, you know, because she's pregnant. So they kept her uh, application in, in pending. and. Uh, Within a month of that, I got the call letter that I have 10 days to join Army. It was a very short time to decide, but by then when I came, uh, I, I had applied for a lot of places in uh, in Chennai for uh, as a senior registrar's job. And when I told them during the interview that I got a call letter in Army, like everybody said, yeah, I think you should go serve the country, it's a good thing, and all those things. It's a small story to it. When I after this I went and joined, I got commissioned. So commissioning is actually, uh, it's a telegram that's sent by signal to the headquarters that so and so is joined. It's like, uh, you know, Abhimanyu's chakra, you going in is easy, coming out is almost difficult. So what is myth is, the outside picture of army is very different from what is inside. Yeah, we made the decision to join. Of course my wife, she was pregnant, nine months pregnant, I joined, they put me in uh, Military Hospital Chennai as the first posting and for day one they started our military exercises also so it is like learning march fast and all those things and packing to Lucknow we had two months of training and that is good because as a doctor you know, everything you knew in army and uh, here they trained you in physical efficiency and what kind of training all the training that you would require in emergency including accounts administration name everything and like we used to run the morning five kilometers and uh, exercises in the evening classes in the morning it was jam packed it was very cold at the time in lucknow but it was also like 
interesting, very new to me. But at the same time, I had a kid at home who was only 10 or 20 days old. And we finished it. We made a lot of friends there. About 100 doctors coming together. It's, it's a big thing. And being in post cargill time, almost 20 doctors had done specialty by then. That means out of 120, 20 were all specialists. All were like me. And I got the letter from there that I was posted to a place called 305 Field Ambulance. A field ambulance basically is you have one surgeon, one anesthetist, about 16 doctors, including four dentists, and the whole unit is about 250 people. So what it meant is that there will be two field ambulances in every division and during war like one will stay put, the one behind you will go in front and give medical support, then they will stay put there, then the one left behind will go forward. When we retreat also the same thing happens. So we basically take care of battle casualty, that's the job. And being a surgeon is being prepared to take care of battle casualties. But the place I found myself was in Tawang and Tawang is, is it's a place of tri junction where uh, Bhutan, India, uh, and China meets. And normally, this is the place which is well known where the Chinese invaded India in 1962. So it is historically important. But I found that this is almost almost like peaceful country there. It's a border area. Nothing the sort which we uh, see uh, or hear news about uh, J and K. So that way I was blessed because nothing happening. But I also felt bad because cases were not coming, you know, being a surgeon I was supposed to operate every day. Here I found it's a tin shed kind of the OT complex where no surgery has been done for almost 6-7 months. And the colleague who joined me as an anesthetist was also similar to me, who had finished course elsewhere and come. So now there's a young surgeon who is just about 27 years old and a 27 year old anesthetist and we're just looking at daily what he called uh, uh, regular OP cases. Uh, then the new commanding officer came and he was like full of energy, was achiever. He said, come on, we cannot have this kind of thing. We have to either do work or if you know surgery is done, we'll offer the services to the civilians there. And civilians are very simple people. They call the Mumpa people there and very hard working, very, very peaceful people. And usually they are dependent on the army economy there. But what I found is during this time I had no cases apart from these small emergencies. I used to write up and they said you have to go for observation to get to become a graded authentic specialist because I was trained from elsewhere. So they sent me to Bagdora which is a place in Siliguri near. I spent some time there, came back and then I found something very weird. They said if you do this observation to become a graded specialist, they said you have to serve minimums seven uh, seven years instead of five years now this annoyed me i started writing letters so i said while during the observation i am keen to do the observation so that i can serve more uh, people professionally but if they're going to make it seven years then i said i will not do it i'll come back to the unit now this is like a cash 22 for the administration they didn't know what to do with me all that they could do was cut my leave so my annual leave was cut to one month they called me back so normally you get two months annual leave in army, that is ten months in five years, but I think and you're allowed to encash two months. So nobody wants to encash the two in a five year job. So I lost some ninety days during this short time of two and a half years. So so that is the negative side. But the positive side is lots of things because in the field you're away from the family, you are spending more time with the men and you mix with them, you know their problems. That's when you realize how India is, you know. You have lots of people coming from different places. And one thing I realized most was, when you meet different units, different kind of, like say a Sikh regiment, he'll talk to you in Punjabi, or maybe with broken Hindi. So everybody you see is very proud and you know, they have the pride about their region they serve, where they come from, their regiment they serve, and most, important was even though it's caste based regiment the language was spoken like if it's a Marathi regiment they speak Marathi in the regiment if it's a Sikh regiment they speak Punjabi in the regiment and if it's an engineering unit from say South they'll speak Tamil there and then I realized my god I have not learned my mother tongue and that's when it strikes you hard how important your mother tongue is and your roots are based on what you are 
and what your mother tongue and the place where you come from at that time i i i made a point that my daughter will learn tamil which is my mother tongue and i will not allow give an opportunity for her to ask me the same question so i requested and they granted me a place in secondabad secondabad was lively because my family joined me there for almost permanently we lived there for almost 18 months there and uh, they used to do temporary duties from hyderabad to wellington chennai and small places and i used to meet even more people but here i was doing core work so as a young surgeon i was taking call every day i was doing operation every day i was doing all the emergencies my senior colleagues were there who had one orthopedician and two surgeons they would give me all the liberty to do this surgery like i was very independent even though i had the uh, what do you call uh, support of them i was doing surgery on my own every day and that's very important for a surgeon and of course the anesthetic used to be bothered that i am bringing every day in the night some case but it's very uh, very busy because i had the family my wife would go work for a part time job my daughter was just joining school so she was doing her kindergarten there and uh, we used to have the evenings to together in between i was just doing surgery i mean most of the time i was spending time and this is where i really got the confidence that i could you know go and face world outside any time i want 